Good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Good evening, teacher. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Good to hear you and see you. <laughs> okay. Good evening, teacher. Good evening. All right. Let us begin. We have a lot of work to do. Okay. Um, as usual, I'm going to call the attendance now. So, everybody, please pay close attention. And when you hear your name, please let me know you're here. Okay. So, uh, number one, Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Alejandro Jose Quintanilla Ayala. Alicia Guadalupe Hernández Romero. Alicia Guadalupe Hernández Romero. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Ana Filomena Mendoza. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Ana Yanira Mendoza Godoy. Andrea Geraldine Sánchez Recinos. Present teacher. Thank you. Andrea Michelle García Selva. Present teacher. Thank you. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Mm -hmm. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Uh, Boris Martín Salinas Quintanilla. Here, teacher. Thank you. Selina Ivette Gutierrez Osorio. Present. Thank you. Denis Isaías Gómez. Good evening, President. Thank you. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez Mejía. Daisy Carolina. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez. Eric Ernesto Linares. Erika Maidel Antonio Flores. Present, Thank you. Francisco Alberto Lemus Guzmán. Present, teacher. Thank you. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. Iris Regina Hernández Cuellar. We have a chat entry. I'm not Iris teacher. I'm sorry, but I'm here, Alejandro. Press. Okay, thank, thank you. Okay, thank you, Alejandro and Ana Yanira. Thank you, okay, Ana thank Yanira you. is here. Alejandro Jose is also here. Thank you very much. Okay, the next one. Just a moment. Um, can you just give me a second, please? Okay, let's continue. Uh, the next one is um, Iris Regina, not here. Jenny Elizabeth Santillana Cortez. Thank you. Jose Raidin Enriquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Katia Graciela Juan. Katia Graciela Juan de Candray. Maritza Isabel Méndez Aguirre. Maritza Isabel Méndez. Miguel Ángel Quintanilla Tejada. Present teacher. Thank you. Nadia Isolina Rodríguez. Present teacher. Thank you. Noemí Alicia Estrada de Valle. Present teacher. Thank you. Ronald Antonio Luna. Present teacher. Thank you. Saúl Antonio Hernández. 
Saúl Antonio Hernández. Present teacher. Thank you. Okay, I'm calling some names again. Alicia Guadalupe Hernández. Present teacher. Thank you. Ana, Ana Filomena Mendoza. Good evening teacher, present. Thank you. Blanca Marisol Vargas. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves. Daisy Carolina Rodríguez. Daisy Carolina. Iris Regina Hernández. Iris Hernández. Katia Graciela Cuán. Good evening, teacher. Present. Good evening. Sorry, Thank you. Teacher. It's okay. Don't worry. Uh, Maritza Isabel Méndez. Okay. Okay. Um, let's begin. Okay, just uh, let me start the presentation. It's right here. Okay, everybody, look, uh, it's Inglés para Avanzado, Módulo 1. And that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service. And this is session 14, okay? And today's March 21st of 2023. So what are we going to do? Well, basically, uh, we just have to go over with the vocabulary from last time, the vocabulary we studied yesterday. If you remember, uh, we studied some terms like anxious, comfortable, confident, curious, depressed, embarrassed, enthusiastic, excited, fascinated, homesick, insecure, nervous, uncertain, uncomfortable, and worried. And we were discussing how you will feel in different countries yesterday. So today we're going to discuss um, something similar, but this time it's uh, certain very specific situations that you're going to be commenting on. So take a look, it's perspectives, okay? If I moved to a foreign country, so what are you going to do? It, it goes, listen to the people, but we're not going to listen to them. We're just going to um, uh, read, okay, the comments. So read the comments from the people as they talk about moving to a foreign country. Would you have any of the same concerns, okay? So here we go. The first one is, and I need a volunteer to read it. But before that, I want you to take a look at this. It's at the bottom. This is how people feel. I want you to do this exercise with me, okay? Please do this exercise with me. And I want everybody to take notes. Please, everybody, take notes. I want you to keep a record of your answers because later you're going to give me a number. So rank each concern. These are the concerns, okay? I want you to rank each concern from one to five. What is your biggest concern? Tell the class. So num you will give each concern a number one if you feel confident about it. It's like, no problem. I wouldn't be worried about this at all. If you say, for example, imagine, one thing I would really miss is my mom's cooking. If I move to a different country, right? One thing I would really miss is my mom's cooking. If for you, this is not a problem, you write number one, okay? Which is confident. I wouldn't be worried about, about this at all. Zero, nothing. But what about number two? Number two is comfortable. I think this will be okay. Not perfect, not ideal, but okay. You can live with it, no problem. Number three is uncertain. What about uncertain? This might be a problem for me. Okay. Mm. Number four. Yes. Number four, uh, it's insecure. This will make me nervous, okay? That's number four, okay? So if a situation here will make you nervous, mm. Okay, that will be number four. And number five, anxious. I would really be uncomfortable about this. Okay, like there is a big problem. So we're going to be reading all of these. And everybody, I want you to take a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. And I want you to uh, rank them. 
okay, from one to five. Remember, number one is no problem. Number four, number five is yes, I will have a big problem with this. Take notes, and after that, you're going to tell me uh, what your final score is. We're going to see who, you know, in the in this class is like the most anxious person about moving into a different country, and who is the most relaxed person about you know, moving into a different country. So I need a volunteer to read the first one who can help me, please. Selina Yvette. Thank you. One thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. Your mom's cooking. Okay, yeah, one thing I really miss is my mom's cooking. So Selina, um, what, would that be number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five for you? Uh, it would be um, the second one, comfortable. Uh, number two, comfortable. Okay, not ideal, not perfect, but okay, you can live with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. In my case, that would be a number one. Okay, yeah. I, I like my mom's cooking, but it's it's not essential. Okay, it's okay. There are other things I can eat, but I like my mom's cooking. So that would be, in my case, I'll be confident. I wouldn't be worried about this at all. It's like, okay, no problem. Okay, what about the second one? I need a volunteer to help me read this, please. Everybody, please uh, write your numbers, okay? At the end, you're going to, you know, make the addition, Calculate the addition, and then you will tell me your final score. So I need a volunteer to read the second sentence, please. Erika. I'd be uncertain about the local food I might not like. I'd be uncertain about the local food. I might not like it. Okay. So, okay, it's, it's food from a different country. There is a possibility that you will not like the food. So, Erika, how about you? How will you rank this concern? Mm, maybe the in another country. Uh -huh, in another country. In another country, maybe the um the I'm sorry. Country, in Mexico, maybe the in Mexico. Okay. The food is very spicy. Okay, I guess this has to do with, uh, or it depends on the country you go to. Mm -hmm. But let's imagine that, well, imagine this. Imagine that they told you that you are going to, somebody is going to send you to a different country, but they don't tell you what country it is. You only know that it's a different country. That's all the information you have. You don't know if it's Mexico, you don't know if it's Canada, you don't know if it's Australia, you don't know if it's Italy, you don't know if it's uh, China, okay? So uh, you have no idea. So in, in your case, Erica, how will you rank this concern from one to five? Remember that one is very confident, no problem. Number five is anxious, it's a big problem. So what do you think? <laughs> um. I'm not sure. <laughs> You're not sure. Yeah. But if you had to pick a number, remember, I mean, there in this case, it's all about opinion. It, but, there are there are no correct or incorrect answers here. But I know I don't see the number. Ah, the numbers are here. Remember, number uh, one, okay. number uh -huh. one, number one is no problem. Number mm -hmm. five is there's a big problem. Okay, so from one to five, how would you rank this concern? Um, concerns. This might be a problem for me. Number three. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I share that. Okay. In my case, I will also say number three. This might be a problem for me because if I don't know where I'm going and I don't know if I would like the food, maybe this is a reason why I should be a little worried, a little bit. Okay, okay. thank you, Erica. Uh, the next one, who can help me read it, please? Any a volunteer? Boris. Okay, Boris. My room at home. Um, no, that's number getting, four. Getting used. Uh -huh. 
or getting used to different customs might be difficult at first. Getting used to different customs, to different different traditions, okay, might be difficult at first. Okay. So what do you think, Boris? How would you rank this concern? Uh, uncertain, uh, the number three. Okay, uncertain, number three. It, it might be a problem for you, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Because okay. I don't, know, I don't know what kind of costume I have to get dressed. Mm -hmm. The problem with costumes is that, and in traditions, is that you may uh, make a cultural mistake. Something that in our culture is normal and perfectly acceptable can be something really bad in a different country, right? So that that's that's mostly the problem. But yeah, okay, number three, those goes for you. In my case, I guess maybe number four, insecure. This will make me nervous in my case in particular. Thank you, Boris. Anna Filomena, number four, please. We have a chat okay, entry. Okay. My room at home is the thing that I miss the most. I be homesick. Okay, so my room at home is the thing that I would miss the most. I would be homesick. What do you think, Ana Filomena? How would you rank In this? In my case, mm -hmm. I think uncertain and anxious. <laughs> uncertain and anxious, both at the yes. same time. Yes, because I can sleep in another bed. You, you only can't, in my bed. <laughs> okay, you can only sleep in your bed. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. So from from one to five, will that be the a number, number four three? or number five? Um, number three. Number three. Okay, so you got number three. Well, everybody, remember, take your numbers, okay? Write your numbers down because later on you're going to tell me. Okay, so... Um, Give me a second. Okay. Jenny Elizabeth. Okay. Good evening. Okay. Good evening. Uh, from, from communicating in a new language is something I be anxious about. Communicating in a new language is something I will be anxious about. Okay. So, what do you think, Jenny? From one to five, how would you rank this? I'm sorry. I I insecure. Insecure. Number four. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, number four. Number four. All right. Because I will. In my, in I my, not communicate mm -hmm. to. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. In, in my case, maybe I will give it a number five. Because mm -hmm. if it's if it's Spanish or English, I have no problem. But if it's a different country, oh my God, okay, that will make me very, <laughs> very, very anxious, especially mm -hmm. if I'm alone and I don't have any anyone to help me. That will be a big problem. But but that's my opinion. So um, I'll give it a five. But that's me. Okay, mm -hmm. everybody, please take notes. Um, thank you, Jenny. What about the next one, number six? Who can help me with this one? I need a volunteer to read it, please. Vamos, animémonos. ¿Quién me ayuda a leer la siguiente, por favor? Ana Filomena. Okay, uh, well, Ana, you, you read you read one already. Okay, so we're going to give a chance okay. to, to Noemi. Okay. But, but thank you very much. Okay, so Noemi and then Alejandro. So Noemi. The number five. No, number six. Number six. Moving to a, moving to a country. Moving, moving to a country which has very different climate Climate could be a change. A challenge. A challenge. Mm -hmm. Moving In to a country with a very different climate could be a challenge. How about you, Noemi? Could be a challenge. In my case, uh, the number three. Number three. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I agree. That will be a number three for me. Okay. I wouldn't like to move to a country of extremes. You know, like if you go to, say, uh, Egypt, for example, I imagine Egypt is very, very hot. Or an African country, right? African countries could be very, very, very hot. But yeah. if you go to, say, imagine the United States and specifically, right, Alaska, because Alaska is part of the United States, that will be the other extreme. 
I, I don't like the extremes. That's my thing. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so Russia. 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 Russia can be very cold too. But there are some very certain cold. parts of Russia that are that are very nice also. So it, it all depends. Okay. So in my case, I will be uncertain. Okay. The rest, everybody, please write your numbers, write how you who you will rank, you know, these concerns, and then we're going to compare. So um Alejandro, the next one, please. Um, I'd be worried about getting sick and non and and not knowing how to find a good doctor. I'd be worried about getting uh, sick and not knowing how to find a good doctor. Yes, and I feel confident about that, about that. Confident, number one. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. In my case, that will be a number two, maybe um, comfortable. Okay. I think it will be okay, but. <laughs> Okay, um, maybe my, 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 <laughs> we my greatest, <laughs> we never know, right? But my, my greatest yes. concern would be not being able to communicate clearly with the doctor because, you know, your health is important. You need oh, to yes. understand. Okay, anyway. Yes. Okay, thank you, Alejandro. And the last one who can help me, please. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. The last one. Who can help me read the last one, please? Dennis. Something I'd be nervous about is making new friends, especially in a foreign language. Mm -hmm. It will be number or number three, uns uh, uns uncertain. Okay, number three, uncertain. <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, I agree. Okay, in my case, that will also be um, maybe uncertain. Okay, or maybe number four in my case. No, I'm going to give it a number four because uh, this will make me a little nervous. Okay, um, it's, it's uh, you know, sometimes communicating with other people, especially strangers, make, makes me a little nervous. I'm a little shy. Okay, so maybe this will give me a number four, three or four. I'm going to say four. So, okay. So I want you to please, everybody, uh, take out your phone or maybe you can do it on your piece of paper and uh, with your piece of paper. I'm sorry. And I want you to tell me what your final score is. For example, in my case, I got a one plus two plus four plus three plus five plus three plus four. My final score is 22. OK, so let's put it here. I'm going to ask everybody here. OK. Teacher, <laughs> I'm gonna write teacher right there. It's 22. So let's see who ranks highest and who ranks lowest. Okay, we're going to see who is the most anxious person about moving to a different country, into a different country, and who the most relaxed person is. So this time I'm going to ask you all. Let's see. Um, in order that you are here in the list, we have uh, Alejandro. What is your score? Alejandro? Alejandro, can you hear us? Yes, teacher. Six. Hi, hi. Ah, six. Six? Really? Yes. Wow. Yes, okay. because th there is there is one that I that I don't answer. One that you didn't answer? Remember. Yes, but I don't remember why. What? Oh, okay. Which okay. One? Okay, so it's, it's a six for you. Okay. All right, no problem. Yes. Alicia Guadalupe? What's your score? Yeah. Uh, ¿Cómo vamos a sacarle el score, uh, teacher? You need to sum up. For example, if you what? have a, you need to, you need to do the addition. Hay que hacer la suma, okay? Just for example, if you have two plus three plus one plus two plus four plus, hay que hacer la suma de los que. Del, del ranking que usted le dio, ¿verdad? A cada una de ellas. Oh. Okay. Okay, we leave it for later. I'm going to ask you later. Okay. okay. Um, Ana Filomena. 14. 14. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, Ana Yanira. 
Mm, so every teacher. Okay. Um, what is your score? Do we have one? Dennis? My final score is 25. Okay. Dennis, final score 25. Boris, okay, we're going to have volunteers. I think it's better. Okay, so um, Boris? Uh, my rank was at the end 28. 28, okay. Um, Selena? Uh, my final score would be 25. 25 too. Okay. Anybody else who wants anyone else who wants to participate, please? Noemi Alicia. My score is 20. 20. Okay. Cool. Anyone else who wants to participate? Mm-hmm. No more participants, it seems. Okay. All right, all right, no problem. So uh, from, from those who uh, participated, okay, we have uh, apparently the least or the most relaxed person of all is Alejandro, apparently, okay? He scored only six. Okay, so apparently he's, he's very relaxed about all this. <laughs> He will be a good, a great person to move into a different country. And apparently the most anxious person about moving into a different country is Boris. Okay, Boris, <laughs> Boris likes to be in El Salvador. He doesn't want to go. <laughs> he loves El Salvador. Okay. All right. So um, followed by, let's see, Selena and Dennis. Okay, 25. And then I guess it was me. Okay, with 22. And then Noemi with number 20. And then Ana Filomena with 14. <laughs> okay. There we go. Everybody, thanks for your participation. And uh, let's continue. Now we have an exercise, which is all about the vocabulary we studied yesterday and that we've been, let's say, reviewing today. So what is this? Complete this, these sentences, use words from the list. So in the list, you have confident, depressed, embarrassed, fascinated, and uncomfortable. Okay, uncomfortable. So number one, there's an example, and they have used the word uncomfortable already. So in my country, people never leave tips. So when I first went abroad, I kept forgetting to tip waiters. I felt really embarrassed. Do you understand the meaning of tip? Money. Yeah, you, you leave some money, okay? You leave some money uh, when they give you some service, okay, especially in restaurants, okay? So yeah, that's some extra money. In El Salvador, well, <laughs> we don't have an option. If you go to a restaurant, that 10% is the tip. I mean, it's not optional. You have to pay it. Okay, so, yeah. Um, we have a chat entry here. Alejandro says, it's because I have 23 years living alone. Oh, really? 23 years living alone. That's a long time. Yes. Okay. Okay. The reason that I don't fear for anything. Okay. All right. You're yes. very relaxed about it. Okay. That's, yeah. that's cool. <laughs> okay. Well, what about number two? I need a volunteer to help me read this. Okay, Dennis, then Selena, then Kat Katia. Okay, so Dennis, number two. Uh, the first time I traveled abroad, I felt really... Um, uh, I felt really un un uncomfortable. Mm. No, I, I I think is uh, I felt really depressed. Uh -huh. I wasn't long. I didn't speak the language, and I didn't make any friends. Yeah, first time I traveled abroad, I felt really depressed. I was alone. I didn't speak the language, and I didn't make any friends. So that was a very depressing situation. Thank you, Dennis. Then Selena, and then Katia. So Selena number three, Katia number four. Thank you. I just spent a year in France learning to speak French. 
it was a satisfying experience and I was uh, fascinated by the culture. Yeah, I just spent a year in France learning to speak French. It was a satisfying experience and I was fascinated by the culture. That is good. Thank you, Selena. Very good. Number four, Katia. Okay, teacher. At first, I really didn't like shopping. In the open air markets, I felt... I felt? I, I felt um, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Say the pronunciation, this Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Mm, no, it's not uncomfortable, but uncomfortable. 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 Um, a little bit faster. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> okay, repeat <laughs> after me. Repeat after me. Okay, repeat after me. Un. Um, come. Come. Pra. Pra. Uh huh. Ball. Ball. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Okay. Okay. Better. Uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. <laughs> uncomfortable. Voy a hacer planas, teacher. Okay. Okay. Uncomfortable. Okay. So yeah, the because word is so many, because so many people were trying to sell me something at the same time. Yeah. Totally. It's like going to markets in El Salvador, right? You say, Shh, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Okay, come here. We have yeah. it here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, at first, I, I didn't really like shopping in open air markets. I felt uncomfortable because so many people were trying to sell me something at the same time. Noemi Alicia, number five, please. When... When I arrived in Lisboa, in Lisbon. I was nervous. Lisbon, Lisbon, Lisbon. Uh -huh. Lisbon. I was nervous because I could speak any Portuguese. As and I began to learn the language, to I became more confident about living there. Yeah, when I arrived in Lisbon, I was nervous because I couldn't speak any Portuguese. As I began to learn the language, though, I became more confident about living there. Okay, cool. Thank you, Noemi. That's the right answer. Before we continue, does anybody have questions about the vocabulary, about the meaning of words, or uh, maybe a phrase that is not completely clear? Any questions? No questions at all. Okay, then. All right, moving on, then. We have this lesson objective. So what are we going to do? In this class, you will learn how to use noun phrases containing relative clauses. So we have studied relative clauses, and now we're going to go into noun phrases containing relative clauses. Sounds complicated, but it really is not. Okay, and uh, again, I could not prepare much of... Uh, say extra exercises for you because there isn't much to say about it. Instead, we're going to try to turn this into a speaking activity. I guess it's going to be more um, effective if we do it like this. So it's a grammar focus, noun phrases containing relative clauses, okay, as a subject and as an object. So what are we going to do? Take a look. One thing that I would really miss is my mom's cooking. There's an example. I'm going to zoom in. One thing that I really miss, algo que extrañaría mucho, right? One thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking. You can say something that I'd be nervous about is making new friends. Nadia. Teacher, uh, about this this example, I, I don't understand very well. Uh, mm -hmm. The difference about this the one sentence Subject and the similar sentence and uh, object. As an object. I don't understand mm -hmm. a different. Mm. The thing is, okay, uh, what you see here in bold 
en negrita, okay, is the subject. The subject of the sentence always comes at the beginning and it's before the verb. You say something that I will be nervous about, all that is the subject. And after that, you have the verb, is. And then you have the rest of the sentence, making new friends. So here's when you use the noun phrase as the subject, but you can also use the same noun phrase as the object. And then you say, making new friends is, the object comes after the verb, something that I will be nervous about. In meaning, the difference is the same. There's no meaning. Ba basically, the clauses just change places. Yes. My confused is mm -hmm. about the, the sentence number one. And with the sample is say subject, one mm -hmm. thing that I really miss you, miss. Miss. But in the other example, in the, in the object is uh, the people is not subject in the first example this, that is my confuse okay um you mean that you don't have a person as the subject yes in the in the first uh -huh. example okay it's, so okay the subject um, is not person is not a person no because in the english language you don't really need a person as a subject i mean a person can be the subject but not necessarily so normally you have it like this this is the structure of a regular sentence you have subject verb and then you have object so normally in a sentence there is the verb and whatever comes before the verb is the subject and normally what comes after the verb is the object okay if it receives the action of the verb so um, we have this the first example goes one thing I really miss, that's the subject, then the verb is, then the object, my mom's cooking, okay? Sería uh, la comida de mi madre, ¿verdad? So what about this? What happens, because this is the noun phrase containing a relative clause. One thing that I really miss, I'm going to move up a little bit. No, sorry. Okay, so one thing that I really miss, that's the subject, and then the verb is, and then the object, my mom's cooking, okay? But you can also uh, use the noun phrase containing a relative clause at the end. In other words, you can use it as the object. And then you say, like this, my mom's, cooking is one thing that I really miss. That's the idea. Now, if you're confused about the subject not being a person, that's normal. I mean, subjects are not necessarily people. ¿Cuál es el sujeto en este caso? El sujeto no es una persona necesariamente. Okay. El sujeto en la primera oración es aquella cosa, aquel detalle que usted de verdad extrañaría. Ese es el sujeto. Ahora, si cambiamos esto en la segunda oración, el sujeto se vuelve my mom's cooking, que sería la comida que hace mi mamá, ¿verdad? That's my mom's cooking. And then the object will be one thing that I really miss. So basically, um, it sounds complicated and technical, but it really is not. And uh, you shouldn't be worried about this that much. Uh, basically, what you need to know is that there are two ways of expressing this. The noun phrase containing a relative clause can come at the beginning or it can come at the end of the sentence. And the meaning is the same. If you say, one thing that I really miss is my mom's cooking, okay, this is good. Or you can say, my mom's cooking is one thing that I really miss. And both sentences have exactly the same meaning. Third example. Two people who I email every day are my parents. Or you can say my parents are two people that I email every day. Just like that. Now, something that's very important is this. 
look, especially when it comes to the beginning, if you need to use a verb, an action as the subject or as the object in the sentence, you will have to use the ing form because this is a gerund, okay? Gerunds can be used as subjects in a sentence or as objects of verbs. So remember, if you are going to use a noun phrase containing a relative clause and that noun phrase begins as an action, then you will need the ing form of the verb. In other words, the gerund is the nominal form of a verb. So you say something that I'll be nervous about. I'm going to put it here, okay. Uh, something I'll be nervous about is, and then the object. But the object is of, of uh, an action, which is make new, make new friends, okay? But because it is the object, you have to use the ing form, making new friends. Similarly, if you want to use it as the subject, you also have to use the ing form. And you say making new friends is something I'd be nervous about, period. So be very careful right there. What are we going to do here? Take a look. You're going to do an exercise together in breakout rooms. This is going to be a speaking activity. Pero por favor, insisto en algo. Insisto en algo. Muy en serio. Muy en serio. Por favor, no se queden callados. Aprovechen la oportunidad. ¿Verdad? Porque siempre que yo entro a los breakout rooms, siempre hay dos personas hablando y los demás solo están... Bueno, no sé. <ríe> no veo cámara ni escucho voces, ¿verdad? Entonces me pregunto a veces, ¿estamos ahí de verdad o no? Entonces, eh, procuremos participar. De acuerdo, procuremos participar. Esa es la idea. Ok, um, the activity is here. Complete the sentences about living in a foreign country. Use the phrases below. Then compare with a partner. Ok, so you have my friends, my family, getting sick, trying new foods, my favorite food, my room at home, making new friends, being away from home, speaking a new language, getting lost in a new city, not understanding people, getting used to a different culture, acostumbrarse a una cultura diferente. So what do you have to do? Very simple. You only need to talk to your classmates and say, one thing I will definitely be fascinated by is, you say like, wow, one thing that I will definitely feel fascinated, yeah, be fascinated by is, imagine making new friends. Maybe you are the kind of person who is very sociable and makes friends easily, and you're excited about making friends from a different country. So you can say, one thing that I will definitely be fascinated by is making new friends, okay? Or you can say, one thing that I will definitely be fascinated by is getting used to a different culture. For me, it's a challenge, so I want to experience this, okay? So everybody will have a different answer. And uh, your answers don't necessarily have to be the ones from the list. You can have a different thing to say. It's okay. You can say it. No problem. So number two, you have blah, blah, blah is something that I will really miss. So what will you really miss? Maybe one of you will say, ah, my family is something that I will really miss. Or my favorite food is something that I will really miss. Or pupusas, okay, are something that I will really miss etc etc so that's the idea basically you have um you're free okay to pretty much complete these sentences in the best way that you consider convenient and that is honest of course we have a chat entry right here uh okay uh please send it on yeah absolutely i'm going to send this via whatsapp so you can have it Give me a second. Okay, it's right here. Okay, it's right there. So I'm going to form the breakout rooms. And um, again, I want you to, okay, just comment on this. You don't need to write anything. You don't need to do anything else. You just need to speak, okay? Just compare how you will feel. All right. So how many people in each group? Let's see, we're going to form five groups, okay? 
So the groups go like this. Room number one, Alejandro Quintanilla, Andrea Michel, Katia Graciela, Nadia Rodriguez, Ronald Antonio. Room two, Andrea Geraldine, Selina Yvette, Erika Maidel, Iris Regina. Room number three, Blanca Marisol, Jose Raivin, Miguel Angel, and Saúl Antonio. Room number four, Alicia Guadalupe, Ana Yanira, Denis Isaías, and Francisco Alberto. Room number five, Ana Filomena, Boris Martín, Jenny Elizabeth, and Noemi Alicia Estrada. So I'm going to open the break of rooms right now. So just remember, okay, really, really, really do me that favor. Communicate, okay? Don't be an expectator only. No, communicate, talk, okay? That's the thing. It's your opportunity to practice. So I'm opening the breakout rooms now. Please, everybody, join your breakout room, and I'm going to be visiting them one by one. Everybody, please join your room now. Ah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, teacher. <clears throat> Let me see. Sorry. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hello, English, please. English. Good evening, teacher. How do you Let say it's is... cool okay. in English? I don't know. You say it's not my fault. It's my fault. No, it's not my fault. <laughs> it's, it's not, not my, my fault. 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 Okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's not my fault. Okay, there is the, the, the exercise. Who wants to start? Wow. Oh, please. Me. Okay. But I don't read very well. Um, one, excuse me. One thing. Menos, menos, menos. You can one, say, zoom out, yes, zoom I, out, zoom in. Zoom out. Zoom, zoom in is more. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Cerca, zoom out. Ah, zoom lejito. out is less. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Zoom in Do you read this? Yes. Uh, yeah. mm, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. When I, one thing I, I definitely be fascinated by is my favorite food. But in a different country? Um, yeah, oh, my family. Okay, what me fascinated by my uh, well, look, remember that the, the, the exercise is about living in a foreign country. Like, if you go to a different country, imagine you, you move to Taiwan, for example, teacher, and uh, probably you will not be with your family, and probably you will not have your favorite food with you. So, okay, Andrea, Train new food, Train new food. Trying new food, okay, that, 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 that will be it, for example, right? One thing okay, I would I, definitely I, be fascinated by is trying new foods, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and the second, mm -hmm. I repeat, um, and the second sentence, uh, my family is uh, something I really miss. Okay, okay, that sounds great. Okay, the, the rest of you, please. Um, 
participate, for please, and, and, while... and I will have to go to a different room now. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I'll see you in a few minutes. <laughs> And three, number, number three, okay. Number three is uh, what the meaning homesick. Homesick is a feeling that you have when you live away from your from your home, from your country. When you miss your family, you miss your friends, you miss your room, you miss your house, you miss everything, and you want to go back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Two things that I'll be homesick for it's definitely my family and the friends and food your favorite food okay. and my room <laughs> okay your room yeah okay. that's for sure yeah when and do you live when do you live in the other country teacher if i have hmm. i'm sorry if i have lived in a, in a different country yeah okay. no no never no, I have never lived in a different country. <laughs> in the past, I had this idea that I wanted to, you know, go to a different country and live there for the rest of my life. But the older I get, yeah, the more I want to stay in my country. Because, <laughs> no, for real, because, uh, you know, when, when you go to a different country, you have to uh, face new situations and you realize that people are very, very different and that their ideas are also very different from yours. The culture is very different, and I don't like that. The Salvadoran society is not perfect. It's very flawed, actually. But mm -hmm. but these are my people, okay? And if mm -hmm. I go to a different country, I think I will miss my people. <laughs> yes. So and maybe I, I, and everything. Uh -huh, maybe, maybe I can go and visit other countries. I would love that, you know? All in visit, but no, yeah. but not moving into the country, no, huh? Exactly. Better. Okay. Uh, everybody... But you can adapt. adapt yes. That. Eventually, you will adapt. That's for sure. But at the same time, you know, I, I once met, I had a classmate who could speak French very well. And uh, she had a boyfriend and the boyfriend also learned French. And then they moved to France. They got married, they moved to France, and then they came back like three years later. And uh, and I asked them, like, well, what is life in France like? Is it really good, really nice? And they told me, no, 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 no. We really want to come back to El Salvador. They say, why? Okay. They say, Christmas yeah. is so sad, they say, so boring, right? Okay, they miss the cumbias. They miss the, the <laughs> typical food. And they say that, for example, in France, the people are the fireworks, okay, the firecrackers and all that. And they but told the me that- the firecrackers contaminated. Yeah, yeah, they, they, <laughs> yeah, they pollute the environment, that's for sure. Um, and, and they also told me that in France, people are very, um, they're not very social, okay? And that people are cold, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, they, they didn't like it. So they, they, they told me, no, I mean, they were visiting only and they had to go back. But they told me, we really want to move back to El Salvador. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think if I moved into a different country, maybe that's what will happen to me. I think. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, just yeah. like what you told me, you can adapt also. Okay. But I don't want to adapt. <laughs> <laughs> that's my problem. Okay. <laughs> I have to I have to go and visit the other breaker rooms. Please continue. Okay. okay and uh, I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay. 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 Bye. Bye. I'll be anxious. Anxious. About. Anxious. 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 Uh -huh. Anxious about are two about. things I'll be anxious about. Thank you, Jose. Mm -hmm. Teacher, are... I really hate breakup rooms. I really Why? hate them a lot. Why? 
it's a waste of time. People don't participate. But it's an opportunity for you to participate with those who do. It's by a waste way, of time for by you. The, by the way, the, the, there were there were like four people in this group, but there are only three now. Where's the other one? I wonder. Believe me, I hate breakup rooms. Well, um, if you want to leave the breakup room, you're free to do so. I mean, uh, if you want to. Uh, but let's let's practice here. Okay, what about this? Um, what is what are two things that uh, you'd be nervous about or anxious about? Okay, uh, getting lost in a new city. Getting another and uh, getting lost in a new city and not understanding people are two things that I uh, be nervous about. Okay, not understanding other people and getting lost in a new city is something that you'll be anxious about, right? Yeah. Okay. What about number five? What will be something that will depress you? Maybe Miguel Angel okay. can help us. Seven. Number five, something that will depress you. Number what is that? Mm -hmm. In my family is one thing that mm -hmm. I need. Will your family depress you? <laughs> uh, that's number five we're talking about. Something that will depress me. Maybe you can say not uh understanding people okay will be something uh, will be something that will depress me okay like mm -hmm. imagine i go to china and i don't speak chinese at all zero okay so i will say not speaking or not understanding people um is one thing no some it's something that will depress me so example, teacher uh, speaking a new language is one thing that i mean be um, embarrassed 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 about embarrassed about okay yeah okay it's one thing that you'll be embarrassed about okay um all right i want you to continue because i still have a couple breaker rooms to visit okay um let's do it i know that sometimes uh the situation is not ideal but let's try to you know get some advantage out of it Okay, so um, moving on to the next one. I'll see you in a few minutes. The, the teacher, because, because the teacher. This... <laughs> uh, <laughs> speak of the devil and he shall appear. <laughs> Okay. The, the, rita, the ritual ha funcionado. The, the ritual worked. Okay, you summoned me. Okay. Welcome, uh, teacher. Did, did you the, um, um, I don't know what to say. Uh, do, do you have, um, do you, do you, do you hot? I don't know. Uh huh. Come on, is it? Mm -hmm. And do you hot and <laughs> today? <laughs> Uh, I'm afraid I don't understand the question. Escuché que dijo hot. Sorry, sorry. Yo quería preguntar si tiene calor. Ah, okay. Um, are you? Ah, are you too? You, you, you can ask that. You can say, "Are you hot today?" Okay. Um, <laughs> not particularly, because normally when I get home, because I have to go to work. Okay, so when I come home, the first thing that I do is I have dinner, and after that. I have a shower. So right before the class, I always, always, every, every, every evening I have a shower before this class. So I'm not particularly hot. Okay. Or I don't think it's it's really hot today. Uh, Why? I, I hear I I hear a lot of people uh, saying uh, take a shower in the in the night is is it's too bad. It's bad, really. No, yeah. I, I love it. I love uh, it when I, I take I a recently, shower. I recently, I recently took a shower. Mm -hmm. Every night I took a, I take a shower. Okay, so it's a new habit that you have. 
uh, teacher. I like it when I when I take a shower at night, I sleep very well. Yes. <laughs> okay. Sorry, Janira. Uh, I I have a question. What's your question? About another topic. Mm -hmm. uh, I need to. <clears throat> I need you tell me one rule or I don't know how to difference to use if and whether. It's the same. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that weather is more formal. Ah, is 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 like just conditional. You you can use oh. it in a conditional sentence. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's possible. I never use it. Do you say that? Although normally, that let's see. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. You can use it in conditional sentences, but. Using if is much more common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's That's the same. For me. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you, teacher. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to visit the final breakout room. Please continue um, working on this. <laughs> and okay. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, teacher. Hi. You can study. I'm afraid. No. Um, Gary uses different tools to and speaking a new language, I do think I very enthusiastic about for me. Okay. Enthusiastic about number ten. Yes. Okay. Number ten, yes. Okay, that sounds good. You okay. you have just finished the exercise, apparently. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, yeah, it's, 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 it's it is only natural because you're 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 the you're the last group, so yeah, I guess it is only natural. Okay, listen, uh, we're going to <laughs> close the breakout rooms now and I guess we're going to uh, check this tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to ask for some volunteers to complete this and we can do it together in class because it's nine, so we need to finish. So I'm going to close the breakout rooms and I'll see you in one minute. Okay. Okay, okay everybody, I'm going to close the breakout rooms now. Um, I'll see you in 60 seconds. Almost everybody is here. Okay. All right, we're going to start because it's it's nine, nine and four. We need to finish this. Okay. Um after discussing this, okay, and I've been visiting the breakout rooms and um well uh I see an improvement. I saw more people talking this time. Okay, so that's good. Okay, not everybody was talking, but more people than usual were talking, and that's an improvement. So uh, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you for listening to me. So um, because we don't have much time, well, we don't have any time left. Uh, we're going to be checking this tomorrow. So basically, I'm just going to go one by one, and I will ask for volunteers so you can tell me your opinions. We cannot do it now because it's too late. Instead, I am going to uh, just call the attendance list one more time and let me know if you're here. Blanca Marisol Vargas Esteves, are you here? Blanca Marisol? Present teacher. Thank you. Uh, Daisy Carolina, are you here? Daisy Carolina Rodriguez. Last call, Daisy Carolina. Maritza Isabel, are you here? Maritza Isabel Mendez Aguirre, final call, no more. Okay, all right, everybody, thank you for your participation.
Uh, again, we're going to be checking this tomorrow, and also we're going to be doing the next some extra exercises together. So thank you very much, and um, good night. See you on Wednesday. See you tomorrow. Good night, teacher. Bye bye. Good night, teacher. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye guys. Bye. Take care.